After defeating Lu Bu at Xiapi, Liu Bei and his brothers were greeted warmly by Cao Cao. However, Liu Bei was unable to clear the uneasiness from his heart. He chastised himself for being too kind, too soft, and for not possessing the cold cruelty of Cao Cao. It was then that a secret order arrived from the emperor. Cao Cao must be slain! It was a cry for help from the emperor himself, who had grown weary of Cao Cao's tyranny. Liu Bei thought to himself, if he were to slay Cao Cao, to whom he was so indebted, then he would be no better than Lu Bu. As Liu Bei struggled with his indecision, the order was given to eliminate Yuan Shu, who had attempted to usurp the imperial throne. Having bided his time in turning on Cao Cao, Liu Bei saw this as a perfect opportunity. Together with his troops, he led a rebellion in Shu. However, the chaos would once again prove cruel to Liu Bei. Cao Cao's massive army dealt his forces a resounding defeat. And during the course of the battle, he lost track of Guan Yu as well. The chaos continued to torment him, a man of unparalleled kindness and purity. And so he sought the help of Yuan Shao, the one man who could oppose Cao Cao. He soon found himself on the fields of Guandu, where Cao Cao and Yuan Shao were already engaged in battle. As he prepared for this great conflict, he quietly cursed his lack of strength. Liu Bei, a man for whom reality fell far short of his idealistic dreams. He desperately sought an answer to his problems. After Liu Bei fled to Jing, Liu Biao granted him the land of Xinye. For the first time since the chaos had begun, he finally had a place to call home. And there, Liu Bei quietly ruminated on his ambitions. His dream of helping to ease the people's suffering, the cruel reality that he had not accomplished nearly enough. He needed someone who could provide him with a way to turn his dream into a reality. The province of Jing, being located in the center of the land, was bustling with travelers coming and going. Despite its vibrancy, Liu Bei would not easily find his answer there. Then, suddenly, Liu Bei's days of peaceful reflection came to a crashing end. His rude awakening came at the hands of Cao Cao, who was practical to the point of cruelty and had no qualms about using power to take what he wanted. Together with Zhang Fei and his allies, Liu Bei stood before the encroaching threat of Cao Cao's army. Would his ideals be swallowed by the depths of Cao Cao's ambition? A world of virtue ruled by righteousness. That was the goal that Zhuge Liang put before Liu Bei. However, with his current strength, such a world was but a far-off dream. His weakness was underscored by the fact that Cao Cao's army had once again launched an attack on the province of Jing. Although Zhuge Liang's clever tactics allowed them to avoid catastrophe, Liu Bei's future seemed grim indeed. Following Liu Biao's death, his successor Liu Tsong surrendered to Cao Cao. With nothing left to fight for, Liu Bei fled from Cao Cao's army and headed south. Time was of the essence, but something was slowing down the pace of his army's march. The reason? Liu Bei had taken all of the people from Jing with him. His virtue served as a beacon for the downtrodden. And Liu Bei too refused to give up on his comrades, who dreamed like he did of a world of peace. 
slowed down by the people, Liu Bei's army was finally caught by Cao Cao at Changban. Was the world of virtue destined to end as a dream before the overwhelming might of Cao Cao's army? Liu Bei and Zhao Yun, as well as the people themselves, were about to be tested. Bring him to safety. You must keep moving. and the path of justice has fallen before me. Thank you so much.
return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall seek. Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me. What's that? My lord! Don't worry. I will keep you safe, little one. I swear it. On my life. There's no need to stay here any longer. We must flee on horseback! Such a display will boost the morale of our troops. You think you can outsmart me? Don't make me laugh. Turn. Remember that, for yours is the first head I shall see.
battle will soon be over. Follow my lead. All forces, advance. Plaudits for your valor, but you have chosen the wrong side. Pick yourself up and try again. You believe your wits are a match for mine? Pick yourself up and try again. To retreat is not necessarily to lose. I'm still waiting for a real challenge. I will accede to your might for now, but next time we meet, you will not walk away. Due to the fierce display of might shown by Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei, Liu Bei was able to safely escape to Jiangsha. Having defeated Liu Bei, Cao Cao confidently turned his army towards Jiangdong. Sensing Cao Cao's intentions, Zhuge Liang went and proposed an alliance to Sun Quan. For Sun Quan, there was little merit in joining forces with Liu Bei's meager army. But Liu Bei was the only one in the land willing to oppose the might of Cao Cao. Uncertain of how to proceed, Sun Quan was approached by Zhuge Liang. He explained that Liu Bei would continue fighting even if Sun Quan were to surrender. For he would not give up until he had made his dream come true, no matter what the cost. Those words pierced the heroic Sun Quan's heart and caused him to staunchly refuse Cao Cao's demands for surrender. Meanwhile, Liu Bei dispatched Zhao Yun to the battle so that he could launch a joint attack with Sun Quan. 
soon the site of their decisive battle, Cherby, was filled with Tau Tsao's massive naval forces. And facing them was the hastily formed alliance of Liu Bei and Sun Quan. As the two armies prepared to engage in heated battle, neither side could know that the key to victory lay in the palm of the sleeping dragon's hand. the direction of the wind. We must ensure that our strategists' attempts to control the wind are unobstructed. Tsao Tsao certainly not sparing any men this time, huh? And our brother, he wants us to tackle that lot head on. You're not scared, my lord. I'm excited, boy. I'm looking forward to a decent fight! That's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. Besides... Our strategist has prepared a plan that cannot fail. 